Hi. What I have here on the bench today is a Regvolt ATVR 1000D 1000 watts automatic AC voltage regulator, and we will open it up to see how this particular voltage regulator works in just a few minutes. I got this one cheaply because it is regulated for 110 volts and not the 120 volts we use here in North America, but I suspect we can probably adjust it so that uh, the output would be 120 volts instead. And uh, we will see that a little bit later. I remember when I was a kid and would sometimes go to my dad's lab and would see these kind of uh, voltage regulators for the computer equipment. As back then the computers were super expensive and they were re really pampered with to some extent. Today, however, you'd rarely see these kind of uh, regulators in residential settings, as power quality is generally very good in North America, and uh, line voltage variations are typically within 10% throughout the day. Electronics built these days and also can easily handle these kind of uh, power supply voltage variations. But for more expensive or sensitive equipment, these AC regulators are still in use in labs and other industrial settings. There are quite a few approaches to AC voltage regulation and stabilization. For instance, the most common ones use tap switching or servo mechanism, auto transformers, and some more modern ones use entirely solid state devices such as power MOSFETs and IGBTs with active PWM circuitry to add to or subtract from the mains voltage via a buck boost transformer so that the output voltage remains stable when the input varies. And yet another entirely different approach is to use ferro resonant transformer. Each of these uh, approaches have its pros and cons, so let's quickly go through them. One of the easiest ways to achieve the adjustment of output voltage is using a auto transformer with the following configuration. So we here have the uh, input winding, which is uh, 120 volts AC. And uh, on this uh, auto transformer we have uh, different tabs, so we have uh, the most common ones are three tabs, so basically one is connecting directly from the input, so this tab would be your 120 volts, and then we have two different tabs, so each one of these could be 10 volts apart. So the output here, you would get something between 110 to 130 volts, and as the input voltage varies, we can use a different tabs, use a, a sensory circuitry to monitor the input voltage and adjust accordingly to uh, either the lower tab or the one for higher vo output voltage. So a slight variation to the tab switching uh, scheme that we saw earlier is to instead of using a three tabs we simply just adding a different uh, coil onto the original coil. So for instance like that. So what happened is uh, this is a Hang on, let me just draw it out here. And uh, so let's denote the phase relationship between those two coils. So here is your 120 volts input. And it depends on how we connect to the output. So let's say this uh, second uh, coil is for 10 volts. And this is uh, obviously 120 volts. So if we connect these two in phase uh, with each other, the output would be 130 volts. If we connect, for instance, uh, like this, because the phase is actually opposite. So now the output would be 120 volts minus, 100, uh, one, minus 10 volts, that is 110 volts. So uh, most of the, uh, the popular uh, the tap switching uh, regulators are of uh, either kind of the design and uh, they use a relay to basically switch among different uh, taps. The main advantage of this kind of uh, regulator circuitry is that it's very simple and robust. Uh, the biggest problem is that uh, the output you can only adjust to several discrete steps. And perhaps um, even more uh, problematic is that every time the relay does the switching, the output waveform is interrupted. So another variation to that is uh, instead of uh, switching it uh, discreetly, we can use a uh, servo to drive the the output selection. So basically we can select it continuously. 
So this one actually is a very uh, popular and as well, and uh, that's uh, what we're going to be looking at in this ATVR1000D voltage regulator. And the main benefit, obviously, is that uh, you have this continuous output uh, because the relay and windings are selected. The windings are selected continuously instead of uh, just uh, discrete steps. The main disadvantage is that it does take some time to regulate the output voltage because uh, you have a, a, a motor here and the voltage cannot be adjusted instantaneously so it has to take some time so there's a little bit of settle time but for mains um, regulation purpose this rarely is a problem and as for the ferro resonant transformer the main advantage is that it can automatically limit the inrush current and also it works with a very wide range of uh, input uh, voltage and the main disadvantage is that uh, um, it usually is very bulky and also the efficiency is uh, pretty low, uh, especially very low. So anyway, so that aside, let's uh, take a look at our um, setup here and uh, we will just take a brief look at this uh, AC voltage regulator we have on the bench. So enough said, now let's uh, turn on this AC automatic voltage regulator and uh, see its characteristics. For that I have my Variac here, and I'm going to turn it on. Actually, I've just plugged in the uh, regulator, and I'm going to uh, turn it on and use my BK Precision 2709 to measure the line voltage here. And I'm just going to stick that in here. Okay. So right now it's at uh, 120 volts, give or take. And uh, I'm going to turn on this uh, voltage regulator. And uh, so how this was designed is basically it's going to be uh, waiting for about 10 seconds before the output is engaged. That is to give it enough time to uh, regulate its output voltage. And you probably already heard a little bit of uh, sound when it was uh, first powered on. And that's the, uh, the servo driving the variac inside, the wiper of a uh, variac inside and uh, which we will see when we open it up. So now I am going to measure the voltage of the output uh, here. Again, I'm just going to plug it in like that. And right now, as we can see, it's uh, 109 volts. So it, give or take, it's 110, which is what exactly it uh, advertised. So now I'm going to start uh, turning down the uh, the input voltage into this uh, automatic trans automatic uh, regulator and you will see the voltage on the right hand side is dropping and you notice that uh, every time I turn you hear this uh, servos sound inside this uh, voltage regulator to adjust the wiper of that uh, auto transformer to maintain the output voltage and I need to push it down a little more here so now we are at 94 volts input and output remains around 110 and we can further reduce it. So 76 and 65. So as you can see the uh, range is actually pretty broad and the cutoff time, uh, cutoff voltage here I think is around right around uh, 60 volts. So now you can see that uh, it's no longer able to regulate the output voltage. So that's pretty good. So now let's turn the other direction. So I'm going to turn it up very fast and you can see that uh, because it's a servo driving the wiper, it actually takes some time to settle. So now let's just dial it up. And as you can see, I dialed it up to 94 volts. It did take uh, uh, maybe a couple of seconds for the actual voltage to settle. So now let's uh, turn it up, dial it up a little more, uh, going the other direction. So now we're above 120 volts. And as you can see, the output remains very stable. So we can keep going up. And the highest I can go for this uh, auto transformer is uh, right around 150 volts. And as you can see, the output remains very, very good at 110 volts. So this kind of uh, AC regulator uh, based on the servo is very good for maintaining uh, the line voltage when AC voltage varies uh, slowly. 
and uh, so now let's adjust it back to 120 before I uh, disconnect this and we will open up this uh, unit and take a look at the, what is the mechanism inside so let's turn around and take a look at the back here and uh, for this unit we have a input is uh, through here and output we have a 110 and uh, 220 actually let me uh, plug this 220 because I don't want to accidentally plug any devices here because I have no use for the 220 but it's good to know that this one actually serves as a step up and so I think we can just uh, remove the screws on the side and it should be able to just uh, slide off the cover so I'm going to do that here and uh, we will see what is inside after I remove all the screws And now we can see the inside, and it's pretty much what we expected. So towards the front here, you can see this uh, transformer, which is uh, similar to what you would find in a, a Variac. And we have the wipers here uh, towards the front. Hang on, let me turn around. So we have the wipers here. And this is basically uh, driven by this motor located behind here. And uh, let me zoom it in, and you can see the gears. So as I turn, you can clearly see that uh, the gear back there is rotating. So that's how it's controlled, uh, this, this wiper is controlled. And at either side of the wiper, you have a limiting switch. So if the voltage is too high, uh, after it adjusts to the one end of the Severiac, you will engage this wiper, and then, you know, certain light on the front would uh, be lit and similarly for the under voltage as well so we can see the circuit board right uh, on the top and it has nothing but a single quad op amp uh, chip lm324 and we see this uh, relay here that is for the on time when it first turned it on that's for the uh, time delay and then we have uh, some uh, trim pots here. So I assume one of these got to be uh, setting the output voltage. So we'll see that shortly. And another one perhaps is for the uh, hysteresis that you set with the op amp so that uh, when the voltage changes just a little bit, uh, it doesn't trigger the actual servo action. So that is actually very, very simple. And uh, the uh, this seems to have changed. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe it's just not uh, straight, but uh, it doesn't affect anything. And uh, on the front panel, there uh, again, it's not much to see here. And um, surprisingly, they just uh, you know wired all the LEDs in the mid air. But uh, since nobody's going to be opening this up and touching anything, so I assume that's fine. At first I thought uh, this one does not have a fuse because uh, I can't see anything outside here but then I found it's actually having this little door here so that's actually a fuse so how this works is that you can uh, when the fuse goes out you can see here you can uh, push this thing out so you can change the fuse uh, in there so it does have a fuse so what I want to do now is trying to adjust the one of these trim pots, I don't know which one is which, but I think it will set the output voltage. And we wanted to set it to 120, which is uh, the voltage we're using here. So for that, I'm going to uh, hook it up to this Variac again, and I'm going to show you here. This one would be, again, the input voltage from the Variac. And uh, let's uh, plug it in here. And I'm going to turn this off right now so that I don't accidentally touch anything here. Okay, so let's uh, power it down. So the Variac uh, shows that right now we're inputting about 120. So we want to adjust output to pretty much the same. So now let me turn on this. Uh, And once it's uh, settled, we will uh, power up. I mean, we will turn on the meter here. So 
so it's 109 and uh, let me adjust it so you don't see the glare so now I'm just gonna adjust it so because I don't know which one it is I'm going to kind of see what the position they're in they're roughly lined up these two so I'm going to adjust one at a time here and as I mentioned um, one is probably for setting the hysteresis and the other one is setting the actual set voltage take uh, okay so let's uh, do it with one hand because uh, right now we're dealing with live circuit here okay ah so this one indeed is adjusting the uh, the voltage i don't know if you can see the servo moving the uh, the wiper here uh, on the right hand side so let me It's very sensitive actually, so let me set it to 100. There. So it's roughly 121, which is uh, perfectly acceptable. And so that's our. Um, now we have adjusted it, so now let's take a look at uh, if that works correctly. So now I'm going to lower the input voltage again. Yep, as you can see, the output is uh, remains 120, and now we're going to increase the. Actually, let's uh, move it all the way down here. So now you can see it hits that uh, uh, limiting switch, and now we're gonna be turning it uh, dialing it the other way, as you can see the uh, wiper moving again, and uh, because our maximum voltage here is only 140. 7 is uh, as you can see we still have a quite a bit of uh, maybe a quarter turn to travel before it hits the over voltage uh, limiting switch and I thought I would just want to show you the uh, the wiper movement uh, close up and uh, while I adjust the output voltage so now I'm turning on the uh, regulator and uh, let me zoom in a little bit so now if I turn the voltage down and uh, now it hits the uh, limiting switch so the front panel uh, let me zoom it a little oh, sorry let me uh, move it a little bit you can see that uh, the under voltage is lit and if i turn the other way around uh, you will see that uh, the wiper moves the other direction so anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new if you did like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe and share. And I will catch up with you next time.